Hello and welcome to this tutorial with me, Rory from Hyper Production. I'm here today with Sonic Academy to show you how to brighten up your mix. So I've got a session opened up here. I've disabled all the plugins and all the processing that I've got so far, and I'm going to give you an AB reference before and after. So here is the before. And here is the after. I'm just gonna switch on all these, and here we go. Okay, so you can hear quite a distinct difference between the EQs and processing on and off. I'll also be showing you a bonus little tip at the end of this tutorial as well. So how do you go about brightening up your mix? It's not as simple as just whacking on a EQ on the end of your stereo out and then busting up the upper frequencies like that, if only it were that simple. So it's a combination of different things. So the first bit I'm going to show you is basically low cutting majority of your elements. That's including snares and hi-hats, percussion, sort of top bass si um, lines and pianos and things like that. Getting rid of all that low end information of stuff that really doesn't need it will automatically be outputting a lot more high frequencies because essentially you're telling the speaker not to worry about the lower end of certain elements so it doesn't have to work so hard so naturally it's going to be pumping out a bit more of the highs out of the tweeters. Another couple of different techniques that we do as well is using overdrive plugins as well and other different distortion plugins. These are really useful for adding additional harmonic content to the upper frequencies and sometimes to the lower, but then again, if you've got a low cut on there, it's not going to be adding too many harmonics there either. So a mixture of all this sort of stuff. So let's have a look on percussion here. We've left that one. On hi-hats, we have a low cut there, so we don't really need it. So if we solo that and played that, we can just see it's just really, there's nothing else there. So we can always do that. Because out of pretty much every element, you're going to have some degree of low-end information that is going to be taking up headroom and basically shutting down your higher ends because the speaker's having to work to try and pump out those sub frequencies. So if it doesn't need it and it doesn't sound any different without, you know, low cutting, just get rid of the low end. Um, because you don't, obviously you don't, you don't need it. You're not going to be able to hear it. It's just, it's not benefiting your track the way you want it to. Then uh, let's have a look over here. So we've got the snare. So we've kind of left the snare, but what we have done is add an overdrive plugin. This is the settings for our overdrive. So we've got two decibels in, and then we've got minus two out because we want to match the frequency. We don't want to be adding any amplitude to it at all. We just want to be hearing the plugin for what it's doing, i.e. adding harmonic frequency. Then we've put the tone all the way to 20,000 because we want to be hearing all the high ends as well because that's the whole point of what we're doing it. Uh, then what have we got down here? So we've got intro piano at the top here, or intro synth which we have low cut as well. That's just this little breakdown bit that we've got here. Then we've got a drop synth here, which we've low cut because of some of the information we didn't need. So again, and also boosted slightly the highs. You don't want to be doing huge, big, broad sweeps in your high ends. You want everything to be sort of one to two decibel max boosts. That is that is, is all, all you need to, because uh, if, if you start boosting too many stuff, you're going to have a lot of clashing in your upper echelons of your frequency. So again, a lot of our transitional effects down the bottom here, we've got all low cut because we just simply don't need it. We want it to, when it come, kicks back in, we want the bass to be carrying a lot of the weight of the impact. So again, that's why we've done the low cut at the bottom there. So a mixture of all these different bits and adding harmonic frequencies through distortion overdrive plugins and low cutting a lot of stuff with your channel EQ will benefit your track and will brighten up your mix. 
Now what you can do is like an added little benefit, which I like to do, is use a plugin by Waves called the Poigtech E something or something, which I'll show you in a minute. So we've got the, where are we? So it's the EQP1A, so you want that in stereo. And the beauty of this plugin is it enables you to attenuate certain frequencies by this dial here. And the interesting thing is it goes all the way up to 16,000, which is pretty much the borderline of human hearing. Now, you're probably wondering, like, why would we boost around there? Because we don't necessarily hear it, but we feel it. So it's not going to be really harsh to our ears, but it's going to add that real nice shine at the top end. So if we boost around about, say, 6, and then I'm going to keep this bypassed, and then I'm going to play the track through, and then I'm going to enable it halfway through this loop. And then you'll see a drastic difference to the brightness. This plugin is one of my favorite tools to use in terms of brightening up a mix or any, any element within the track. You don't just have to put it on the, on the output, so the main output, you can put it on anything to give it a bit of brightness. There's a great little trick there, and this plugin seems to do it the best. This is based on an old TubeTech EQ, but they've called it the Puig Tech because it was developed by Joseph Puig. So, highly recommend this plugin. If you get your chance to uh, get your hands on it, highly recommend it. This is a great little tool. 16,000 and then just give it a nice little boost adds that lovely bit of top end shimmer and clarity so this has been a tutorial on how to brighten up your mix i hope you've learned something here today i've been rory from hyper production and you've been watching sonic academy thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.